Hello, hi everyone. Welcome to FMG 2023 Solutions. So, I am Dr. Swarab Dixit and I will be discussing the surgery paper. This time, surgery paper was super easy. For me, uh, if I say majority of the things were very easy and conceptual, there was nothing like Tom Dick Harry syndrome. It was straightforward questions. But yeah, I have tried to just recall all these questions. Students, a disclaimer before I start my uh, discussion. These are the questions which have been uh, collected from the students are not my own uh, questions because I have not given the exam. It is based on the memory. So there may be some questions which might have been incorrectly reported or some options which might have been incorrectly reported. So I will try to do the justice as much as possible. So the first question is a straightforward question from triage. You know triage is where we uh, have a scenario where the demand and the supply is not meeting. So we have to maximize the treatment output. And triage, when we talk about triage, the patient priority is done by the color coding system. So the question says which of the following is correct about the triage. Red is given the maximum priority. Then we have the yellow then we have the green and then we have the black. So black includes either dead or moribund people. So if you read this, this is absolutely wrong. Yeah, Green includes ambulatory patients. So who are these ambulatory patients? They have minor injuries. So they just require a first aid management or first aid intervention. So they are the one who don't require any admission. So this green is also wrong because Either the green is ambulatory or when you talk about life threatening, yeah, it is immediately life threatening is what is red. When we talk about red, it is immediate life threatening and when something is immediately or you can say potentially life threatening, you need to take these patients ASAP for the intervention. So red is ambulatory, no, they are the one where you cannot deny and you cannot even delay. Now, yellow are the patients who require intervention. So, they are the patients who require intervention but not life saving. Now, this is what is very, very, very important. So, in this case, I would say amongst the option given below, the best option is yellow is a stable patient but they need observation and that is why they should be sent to the hospital. Next is you have a patient. This is a very easy question. Can you see uh, near the medial malleolus you have an ulcerative growth. Patient came to OPD with a history of burn with a such kind of image. What is the answer? This is well differentiated SCC and this is also known as Marzolin ulcer. So what is a Marzolin ulcer? This is well differentiated SCC arising from a long standing either venous ulcer or a burn wound. So in this case, this is. Now why it couldn't be a, you can say a venous ulcer? It could have been, but the location would have been this gator zone. So this is what is very, 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 very important. So this is a classical Marzolin ulcer that we have. An infected burn wound will not be like this. So you can see a growth here. So the option A is the best option amongst the things given. Elderly patient with dysphagia, halitosis and regurgitation. So why dysphagia, why halitosis and why regurgitation? You need to understand that around the Kalian's dehiscence, basically Kalian's triangle we have. Kalian's triangle, there is a dehiscence which is known as Zenker's diverticulum. It's a pulsion diverticulum. Try to understand this time they have not mentioned the word Zenker's diverticulum. Diverticulum or diverticulosis. So they are of two type. One is true. The true one is known as traction and one is the pseudo. The pseudo one is known as pulsion. So what are the two pseudo pulsion or you can say defects? that we have in esophagus, either it could be a Zenker's diverticulum which is also known as cricopharyngeal ecclesia or students, the another one is epiphrenic. When we talk about the pulsion diverticulums, what are the pulsion diverticulum that we have? We had parabronchial, parabronchial or the another term that we use for this is mid esophageal. So if you see why there is halitosis because the food enters here. Why the food enters here? Because this is upper esophageal sphincter. Whenever you eat anything, there is first relaxation of this upper esophageal sphincter. So normally if this sphincter is closed, the food often enters here. When the food often enters here, what happens? Now the sac becomes heavy and it intends on the posterior wall resulting in the same concept of dysphagia. So dysphagia, regurgitation and why halitosis, the putrefication of the food in the sac. So this is a pulsion diverticulum. This is what is very important. Students always remember Achalasia cardia 
in and CA esophagus and GERD, they have both dysphagia and regurgitation, but halitosis is not written. Halitosis is not mentioned. Had halitosis not been there, students, you would have required a lot of things like a CT to confirm esophagus, like pH monitoring to confirm or MII pH monitoring to confirm the GERD and a manometric assessment for the achalasia. Gone are the days when just on the clinical presentation you used to suspect the esophageal lesions. To confirm them, you have your different investigations that we have. Next is patient after Bilrod 2 gastric demi operation. So, patient has undergone Bilrod 2. What is Bilrod 2? Either uh, you can go for the post gastrectomy if you talk about this is loop gastrojejunostomy or students you can also have it like this. So what is this? These are two loop anterior gastrojejunostomy. So patient presents to you with diarrhea within the 15 minutes. Why this happens? Because now the food directly enters into the you can say intestine along with that the acid is going directly into the intestine neutralizing the pancreatic juices. So the first thing that we have to understand, there are two concepts. One is you are looking at the dumping syndrome and one is you are looking at the post gastrectomy diarrhea. So post gastrectomy diarrhea are either because of dumping syndrome or because of the acid neutralization. Both of them will improve with the time if you do some lifestyle changes. So we will not convert this Bilroth 2 to Bilroth 1 and Ruen by gastrojejunostomy. No. Insulin is not required here. What is one very important thing? Small frequent meal is and low carb diet. Students increase protein in the diet is not going to change the thing. It's a low carb, small protein diet. Rifaximine, if it doesn't work, injection octreotide is also given. So option A is very important. If it fails, then only you will go for option B. So small uh, you can say frequent meals with low carb content, PPIs. The third is, yes, if they doesn't work, you have to go for one very important thing that is injection octreotide. If that also fails, then you will have to either go for a bronze procedure that is conversion of those loop gastrojejunostomy. Along with that, you will do a side to side jejunostomy. That is what is a bronze or if, st if still, then you will have to convert into ruin by gastrojejunostomy. So option A is right in this. Delayed wound healing in a minor surgery is due to deficiency. You know, zinc is very, very, zinc and silver are very, very, very important agents for healing. And it is zinc, which is the answer here. So zinc is very important than D. So vitamin C is important, vitamin A is important, vitamin D is important. But yes, right now, zinc is very important. So zinc is the answer that is required here. Now, the gas used in abdominal laparotomy. No, it is not someone who has recalled this. It should be laparoscopy. And we don't require an abdominal to be written here. Why? Because lapro itself means abdomen and tomi means to open and scopy means to explore it with an endoscope. So remember the word laparotomy, we don't require any gas. If it is laparoscopy, yes. What is the gas of choice? CO2 is the preferred gas of the choice. Students, all of them, all of them are used. So CO2 is preferred. Why CO2 is preferred? Because it is cheap. The second is it is odorless. The third is it is non-combustible, non-combustible. Students, when you talk about uh, the nitrous oxide, yes, it is preferred for diagnostic purpose. Why it is preferred for diagnostic purpose? Again, it is cheap, it is odorless. I would say with respect to CO2, it is mid costly, but the drawback is it is combustible. It is combustible. One advantage is that since it's a nitrous, it has that analgesic effect. Now, when you talk about oxygen, it is not used. Why? Because oxygen can cause, yes, explosions when you use what classical uh, diathermy, whenever you use energy instrument, oxygen is not used. Helium is the most inert gas and nowadays it is preferred for oncosurgery. So, it is preferred for cancer. So, lap oncosurgery, nowadays we prefer this. So, don't think if I have to ask this question, I can change this question to which gas is not used during this laparotomy? So I would have marked oxygen. Ox so nitrogen is also not used. Nitrogen and oxygen are not used. You can use even room air. You know, all the new generation insufflators, they have a sensor. So if the gas, imagine you are doing a surgery and the gas goes off, then what you will do? Huh? You will cry and convert into open. So they have an automatic sensor which will take the air from the you can say external air that is you can attach a supply also of the air or they will take the room air also and help you actually 
buy some time to finish the OT or plan a change the cylinder or if you have asked your assistant okay get it from my car or get it you made a call to the the gas agency that quickly send it within 10 15 minutes you can manage this way so this is what is so even room air can be used in such cases a patient came with pain in the right iliac fossa so this is the site of the pain palpable lump in the right iliac fossa so there's a lump and pain blood investigation shows increase in tlc increase in tlc what is the management so you are heading towards acute appendicitis now along with this you have a substantial evidence that there is a lump now whenever there is a lump why this lump happens because of the conglomeration of what students bowel so acute appendicitis the next thing is is there any palpable lump so when there is palpable lump if it is yes then you will have to go for a conservative management what is conservative management broad spectrum antibiotics fluid and supportive care and this regimen is known as oshner sherin regimen this is what is very 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 important now this doesn't mean that okay if the patient doesn't get improved with the symptoms you will continue with this so when you do this you have to reassess after 48 hours when you do the reassessment after 48 hours what is the next thing that we need to do if the patient improves if the patient improves what is the next thing students yes discharge the patient and if the patient if the patient improves i'm talking about discharge the patient if the patient worsens then you will have to plan a midline laparotomy because you might require even a you can say right hemicolectomy in this case if there is no palpable lump yes you can jolly well go for laparoscopic appendicectomy laparoscopic or open appendicectomy nowadays open appendicectomy is a curse no one is doing students so it's an oshner sherin regimen alvado's regimen there is no such regimen it's a you can say a criteria alvado's criteria is a criteria for diagnosing the acute appendicitis clinically and based on the biochemical investigation not the radiological evidence getting so we have pain in the right iliac fossa we have fever we have uh, you can say patient presenting to you with anorexia or nausea vomiting so all these terms are kept then t elevated tlc and a left shift of the neutrophil curve or maybe the increase in crp which is modified alvados now next is uh, what is the site for insertion of the needle in the thoracocentesis always remember along the lower margin of the rib there are intercostal nerve bundles so whenever you want to plan it you always have to plan it along the grazing along the upper margin of the rib so it is upper border of the lower rib this is what is the answer so upper border of the lower rib is the right answer why because if you go uh, too high in the middle or in the upper border uh, if you go more up higher up so you will go you will catch the lower border of the consequent upper rib so always remember grazing along the surface of the rib on the upper border this is what is very 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 important next is a patient came to you with bleeding in the lungs so there is uh, there is basically uh, this is a rta patient with the hemothorax so when you talk about hemothorax the next thing is okay what to do now 1800 ml was of the blood was lost in the chest tube so whenever we have a hemothorax the next strategy is tube thoracostomy so when we talk about tube thoracostomy the very next thing that we need to understand is what is the output so if the output is more than 1500 ml in case of blunt trauma so here it's not mentioned whether it's blunt or penetrating or more than 1000 ml in penetrating trauma or students more than 200 ml per hour for three consecutive hours consecutive hours this is what is an indication for urgent thoracotomy not thoracostomy so thoracotomy should be the answer here because god has already taken a call for this patient if you don't take a call you will lose the patient now investigation of choice for a very coarse vein it's a very important so whenever we talk about venous system and when we talk about lower limb venous system so what is an ideal investigation so it's a doppler scan so doppler scan this is what is so duplex or doppler plethysmography is not required here mr venography shall be over investigation for this case so doppler scan is having high sensitivity specificity and accuracy next is what is the material used for lichtenstein mesh so what is a lichtenstein mesh graph i have 
very commonly taught this topic. Hernia is one of my favorite topic. I teach laparoscopic hernia. So be it lap hernia, inguinal hernia, be it open or inguinal hernia. The quality of mesh that we use is polypropylene. So polypropylene, proline mesh. That is what is proline mesh. Why it is used? Because first of all, it is uh, hydrophobic mesh. What is hydrophobic? It will, like when you have na, uh, poly glycolic is the suture that is absorbable so you need a non absorbable mesh ideal mesh is non absorbable so polygalactin is also absorbable so there is no such use however in composite mesh that we use for the ventral hernias we use a complex mesh or composite mesh where we incorporate polygalactin like vipro we have or uh, we have uh, polyglycapron also we have polyglycapron the polygapron is monopril uh, monocryl along with the proline. So at least you need a non-absorbal material. So either it's a proline that is polypropylene or it is a polyester. Both the meshes are non-absorbable. But the drawback with polyester is this is what is very 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 important that polyester meshes they are hydrophilic and when something is hydrophilic students the problem is that the chances of contamination are high. I forgot to read the comments. Okay okay okay. Okay so fever was also there. Na? So yes uh, Vivek, if the patient is having the fever in that last question also, it is acute appendicitis. I hope I am sorry for ignoring your comments. So, uh, did you get this question? So, the answer for this is polypropylene mesh. So, polypropylene or proline mesh, this is what is ideal. Always remember, oh, I, I, because I was not looking at the comments, that is why you, you people must be assuming that it is recorded. And then uh, one added thing to this is, what should be the ideal size of the mesh? So whenever we talk about the ideal size for any mesh, defect plus 8 to 10 centimeters, this is for open hernia and for laparoscopic hernia, it should be defect plus 10 to 12 centimeters. Why? At least 4 to 6 centimeters of area around the defect should be covered because as the healing happens, there will be fibrosis. So, so I will be just looking at your comments. Sorry, sincere apologies for that. Next is, if you have any doubt in the previous question also, Anna, uh, you can ask me, huh? okay. patient had RTA and brought with bradycardia along with high BP, the GCS came to be less than 8. Student forget everything. When we talk about the classification of head injury on the basis of the GCS, so what are the important things that we need to understand? We have mild, we have moderate, we have severe and there is one more category that is minor. So when we talk about minor, it is defined as GCS. 15 out of 15, then mild is GCS 14 to 15 out of 15. Now you must be thinking sir, what is 15? So always remember 15 by 15, if there is association, if it is associated with history of loss of consciousness. So if the patient says, okay, right now he's telling you everything, but he told that when this happened, I lost the consciousness, I, I couldn't get it. What happened for next 10, 15 minutes? So this is what is a mild. Then we have moderate GCS 9 to 13 by 15. And what is severe? GCS less than equal to 8. That is 3 to 8. What is this GCS less than 8 meaning? Always remember any severe head injury, the patients are considered to be the patients in coma. What do you mean by coma? Coma is a state when you cannot support spontaneous ventilation. That is the reason why any patient less than 8, they require urgent and urgent intubation and ventilation. Of course, other things are okay. But CT can be done only when the patient is hemodynamically stable. So intubate the patient. This is what is very, very, very important. Uh, Tane, you can just uh, text me or you can just text at the end what were the questions because uh, I, uh, Tane, I have not given the paper. So practically I uh, might have not uh, been able to justify this thing. So yes, based on the questions I got, I'm just recording it for you. Now a patient presents to you with blisters which has a woody surface and is extremely painful. This is a classical, classical, classical uh, case looking like these, all these things are kept in a, in a, what you can say, in a differential diagnosis. But it cannot be a DVT because in DVT, we generally don't see such kind of presentation. Blisters are not there, but yes, in the late stages, in the late stages, when we talk about uh, phlegmasia, cerulea, dolens, you might have when the patient has developed a gangrene, then this patient might develop. When we talk about gangrene, if you talk about gangrene, there will be some 
you can say uh, some line of demarcation in the gangrene so it's it would not be like healthy part here and dead part here it would have been dead here also because this is the most distal part yeah the next thing that we need to understand woody this is what is very 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 important this woody presentation is a classical that we get to see in cellulitis also and necrotizing fasciitis but in necrotizing fasciitis we have this boggy swelling also so cellulitis clinically since the information is not provided cellulitis is far better option than necrotizing fasciitis necrotizing fasciitis starts with a deeper layer and there will be pus so this woody tendency was not there so this image was there no then this was not there so okay so this is what is b is better than c b is better than c i hope that's clear to everyone okay next is a patient with aortic dissection involves uh, the hiccups this is due to what irritation so first of all bacche aorta if it is irritated why will you have hiccups it is because of the irritation to phrenic nerve this is what a spinal accessory is going to supply to your trapezius that will be a different thing that will be a pain radiating to the scapula or tip of the shoulder but it is a very easy question it's a phrenic nerve which is going to cause this best in investigation to understand the renal perfusion students mac 3 so we have mac 3 this is what is very 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 important so dmsa is for the structure assessment structural assessment and mac 3 or dtpa scan mac 3 or dtpa scan oh i'm glad that thought was <laughs> okay okay cellulitis is right for this so mac 3 and dtpa scan are for the renal perfusion DMSA scan is for the structural assessment. Retrograde RGU. This is for uh, the urethral injury, and CT urography is for bladder trauma. So I hope you know that the answer here is A. Bladder trauma is going to be related to CT urography. Next is a patient with cystic swelling in the floor of the mouth in the you can say in the capsule which we have revised FMG ATS series. There I have shown this image. floor of the mouth with bluish red transillumination is positive what are you looking for renula and remember dermoid cyst it is non transillumined it is non transillumined point number 1 the second point is it is also whitish whitish are you getting this so it is not a sublingual cyst or sublingual basically sublingual cyst is a broader term which you can say okay so uh, mr lal was saying lie saying sir for the cellulitis question it was mentioned swelling goes beyond the red so it's a renal in this case in this case it is more of what cellulitis than necrotizing fasciitis in this case however students they are all interconnected things cellulitis is a superficial presentation necrotizing fasciitis starts with the lower surface so there the edema is below or you can say the abscess formation is there so the tissues are dewy and boggy they are not woody the word woody with such kind of blister like presentation means that it is starting from the superficial part next is so kidney stones removed the patient now i want to ask you about the correct options for this so kidney stones were removed patient presents with flank pain after 4 to 5 years now 4 to 5 years the patient is having flank pain with a foreign body on the imaging so this is a dj stent i don't know this was the image or no with a foreign body here so what you have to go for it should not be cystoscopy it should be urs so ureteroscopic 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 retrieval yeah retro remember why will you go for laparotomy and why will you go for cystoscopic removal so this option is i think this option is itself doubtful so someone who has recorded this doesn't know that the laparotomy is open and cystoscopy is the what is the endoscopic version so this option doesn't mean rgu is a diagnostic test why will we leave a foreign body inside try to understand so if this was the image you will have to go for ureteroscopic removal or a rhinoscopic removal nothing other so i think it should be uh, endoscopy not cystoscopy because if you talk about cystoscopy it will only go to bladder it will not be able to go to the ureteric level so this is at the level of puj or maybe uh, the just proximal one third of the ureter so if this was the image it should be endoscopic removal of the foreign body this would be the most probable answer i have corrected this yes so uh, i hope you understood the concept what should be i don't know about the correct options i have just corrected it for you people 
so uh, next is what are you getting this again a bladder a bladder with benzidine explosion this is an increase uh, there is an increased risk of what carcinoma bladder and this is nothing but urothelial cancer so when you talk about urothelial cancer what is the next step you are going to go into the bladder resect it off why we resect it a bit deep why we resect it be deep because we want to know the diagnosis not only diagnosis we want to know the grade and along with this we also want to know the status of muscle invasion and that is why we go right up to the junction of urothelium with the muscle and this is what is known as TURBT transurethral resection of bladder tumor cystoscopy was mentioned in both the options so bache how will you remove this with cystoscopy so now just now just try to understand so if this is the cystoscopy now if this is the cystoscopy then this image is wrong why because this is a patient underwent the kidney stones now you are looking at the what dj stent so if the options now i have the confidence since you people have told now this is an incidental stone don't look at the stone if this is there so incidental stone there is an incidental stone so if there is an incidental stone you will go for ureteroscopic removal for the stone for stone and when you talk about the foreign body it is the dj stent so you will go for cystoscopy and removal of the stent also but had i got this image i would have also looked okay there is a stent that is different but there is a remnant of the stone also so i would have gone for urs when doing a ureteroscopic removal i would have removed the stone also and i pulled out the stent also are you getting this is what is but anyways if you have confirmed that this was the image so dj stent was there patient might have not returned back because many a times once you do a pcnl you don't uh, many of the times the patient doesn't turn up to you you have put a stent to avoid the post operative edema related obstruction of urinary tract and the, the rule is you have to call the patient after 10 days and say okay come then in opd only will insert a cystoscope and take out this tube that is dj stent patient might have missed it so in this case yes then if this was the option then cystoscopic removal of the foreign body so yes it is right cystoscopic removal if this was the image and if you are saying that okay endoscopy word is not written or ureteroscopy is not written so cystoscopic removal of the foreign body means that you will pull the with a cystoscope you will pull out the classical dj stent which has been left over i hope you got so i was just waiting for you people to tell me the right options so when you talk about this you will go for trans urethral resection of the bladder tumor this is what is very 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 important students radical cystectomy will be done only once the diagnosis is there here you don't have anything so it should be turbt not turp why trans either you write tu or transurethral resection if you are writing turp that means for prostate so this is a bladder tumor that is not iv bcg will be given intravesical bcg will be given when you have post turbt high grade or maybe carcinoma in c2 do refer to my lectures on alan next for the bladder tumors i have beautifully described the correct regimen that we follow so whenever we have a suspected patient with painless hematuria we go for the cystoscopic evaluation of that along with that urine for cytology once we see something we have to go and resect it off to check what it is whether it is muscle invasive or not if it is muscle invasive then you will have to go for cystectomy if it is not then you have to plan intravesical chemotherapy or intravesical bcg so intravesical bcg will only be done once you have the diagnosis that it's a grade 3 or a carcinoma in c2 are you getting me this is what is very 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 simple next is a patient with thyroid malignancy serum calcitonin was found to be very high leave everything the answer is medullary thyroid cancer it's a very easy 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 question now 6 year old came with midline swelling which moves with protrusion of the tongue protrusion of the tongue so midline swelling midline swelling which moves with deglutition with moves with deglutition answer is the thyroid swelling can also move with this and the thyroglossal duct can also move with this but when it comes to protrusion of the tongue it is the thyroglossal duct which is connected or its remnants are connected by a fibrous cord with the base of the tongue because the origin of the medial and large and thyroglossal duct is same so what is the surgery n block cystectomy n block cystectomy what is n block cystectomy this is what is very 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 important uh yes that is cystoscopy with the removal of tumor okay so if students if 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 let me tell you if 
if it is TURP and cystoscopy, these two are the options. B will be the answer, not the C, because it should be TURBT. I hope, uh, Somi, was it TURP written or TURBT written? If TURP was written, then TURP will never be the answer. It is, then the best answer would be cystoscopy and removal. Had it been TURBT, so it should be TURBT either. So, I hope you people will tell me because you people have given was TURBT given. If that was given, that should have been the answer. So, what is block cystectomy? Removal of the cyst and along with that, along thyroglossal duct cyst and along with that, you will also remove the central part of the central part of the hyoid. Are you getting this? This is what is very, very, very simple. So, you people will tell me whether TURBT was there or no. In esophageal cancer, the post-radiation weight loss is due to esophageal fibrosis. And why? Because this is going to lead to loss of peristalsis. Loss of peristalsis due to fibrosis will cause dysphagia and this is very, 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 very important. Again, so all of them can happen but GRD is not the reason. So, it is A which is, which is very important answer here. No other answer can justify it. So, if TURP uh, Mr. Lai was there, so then this should be, the option should be B, cystoscopy with the removal of the bladder, that is bladder tumor, that was, that is known as TURBT. In intraoperative blood loss, if there is intraoperative blood loss, what is the fluid that should be given? Already remember during the surgery, you are giving the saline. So, now already the patient is losing the blood. The best replacement, the best replacement is blood with blood. This is what is very, 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 very important. What is the shawl solution? Huh? It's not lemon water, lemon soda. So, it is in this case, it's a very easy question. Now, what is the layer which is not there? So, esophagus, you know, it is having submucosa and mucosa. So, submucosa is there, then muscularis is there. So, mucosa, submucosa, muscle and after muscle, they have adventitia. But what is not there? Serosa is not there. Since serosa is not there, that is why esophageal tumors grow first initially outside. And by the time they grow and grow into the lumen and occlude the lumen, they are considered to be late. Had serosa been there, that's a packing that would have contained this tumor goat or restrained this tumor growth outside. So, dysphagia would have been early feature if serosa would have been there. Serosa is not there, that is the reason. So, serosa. Next is, a patient on RTA presents with unconscious says BP is normal, NCCT. I hope, I couldn't get this image, but I have heard that this, the image which I have seen from various social medias, students have shared it on various social medias. It was an EDH image that was there. So, epidural biconvex, biconvex. Now, you people can put your input in that. Was it, uh, was it epidural or no? So, was it biconvex? Elderly male with urine hesitancy and retention of urine. So, retention of urine and urine hesitancy. What are they? Lower urinary tract symptoms with AUR, acute urinary retention. Ultrasound shows residual urine. So, this is sufficient to understand that this patient is having something like BPH or maybe or maybe CA prostate. This is what is very, 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 very important. What should be the next line of action? The next line of action should be urgent, urgent Foley's catheterization. So, that is not there. And along with that, you have to start with the classical 5 alpha reductase. Along with this, 5-alpha reductase is not going to give that immediate relief. You have to go for alpha blockers. So, alpha blockers, alpha blockers are not there in the option. So, if this was a scenario, 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, that is maybe dutasteride, maybe finasteride along with that, the sildosin, aldosin, alfuzosin, these are the classical drugs that we'll go for. So, this would have been a better answer in this case. But I don't know, maybe the options are incomplete. But yes, 5-alpha reductase is not going to give you the immediate, uh, you can say, solution with respect to the urine retention because BPH is nothing but, it's a stromoglandular disease where there is a mechanical adynamic obstruction because of the tumor and dynamic obstruction is because of the increased alpha receptors. So, if you need to have a quick relief, you have to add the temsulosin. So, this is important. But if you have to have that sustainable relief, you have to have 5 alpha reductase which will reduce DHA and DHA will reduce the stimulation on the prostate. This is what is very important. Lady with the breast lamp with PUD orange occupying more than two third. Uh, try to understand. PUD orange means what? Skin invasion? Yes, it is a skin invasion. That is because of the. So, what is PUD orange all about? So, these are the dermal lymphatics. 
so dermal lymphatics are blocked with the tumor cells and that is why you have subcutaneous edema and that is what is t4b now t4b includes edema t4b includes the word ulcer or t4b includes the word satellite nodule so they are very 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 important this is what is b next is lady with nipple discharge with ductectasia so what is ductectasia it is nothing but involvement or inflammation of multiple ducts and radial excision or cone excision is done so what is this cone excision better known as so cone excision hatfield hatfield cone excision hatfield cone excision this is what is very 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 important microdocectomy is done for single duct try to understand ductectasia usually involves multiple ducts even if it is not involving it will involve so that is why the correct treatment is hatfield ductectasia radial excision with shaving of the under surface of the nipple so that it doesn't occur because it's a chronic subarular abscess also in certain cases but the mastectomy is not done for these patients next is so image of a patient showing you a gray turner sign so gray turner or maybe kullen sign they are all so gray turner kullen sign along with that we have uh, the fox sign they are all the signs of hemoperitoneum and they may be associated with lot of conditions but one very important abdominal pathology is acute pancreatitis not the pancreatic cancer it is acute pancreatitis portal hypertension you will have that caput medusae cancer of the stomach you will have sister mary joseph you don't get to see this you get to see migratory superficial thrombophlebitis but not hemoperitoneum so hemoperitoneum is seen in this next is okay so patient with head trauma with ct brain showing edh with mass effect yeah i think that was if that is uh, that is kya no sir niche tak tha kya what is that uh, which question modi ji oh hi hi modi ji hi hi bachche bloody discharge okay ujwal uh, ujita pile if it is bloody discharge from a single duct it would have been microdocectomy so if we talk about if if you are saying if you are saying dekho just uh, just telling one thing if it is if you say that the question says bloody discharge from the single duct from the single duct if this is the scenario students always remember this is intraductal papilloma which is the most common reason and in that case microdocectomy should have been answered sir ace inhibitors or beta blockers is good for dm uh nephropathy induce hypertension but beta blockers are contraindicated in diabetes but see, we will take that question medicine people ask medicine people i'm not going to that but yes uh, dr dai flank pain may be because of the hemoperitoneum developing now if the patient has developed the uh, kulen sign uh, or the gray turner kulen is you know around the umbilicus gray turner is along the flank so the answer is same because of the subcutaneous edema there might be pain yeah okay there was there was clot near the urinary bladder and the groin area yes bachche that is fox in near the inguinal region if it is near the inguinal region also it's a fox sign they are all related are you getting me anonymous are you getting this so fox culens greater they are all related with acute pancreatitis okay okay or oh, pancreatitis ka option hi nahi tha uh then you will have to type the right question if if that was not there yeah so you will have to type the right question so there could be uh then this option is not right so please 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 you have to mention the question again i will check it out okay 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 i'll check it with the students you people can type the right question i'll come back to that also no now the question is ct brain showing edh with mass effect the next thing is you will have to do craniotomy i think someone was suggesting me craniotomy option this is immediate craniotomy what are the indications for conservative management the answer is clot less than 1.5 cm in edh or less than 30 cc in volume point number 1 the second is the clot this is about the clot volume either the volume should be less or the size should be less and the gcs of the patient should be more than 8 this is what is important now here the patient is having mass effect so that is where you will always write the answer as craniotomy not observation 34 year old with palpitation headache episodic episodic hypertension so what are you looking at this is pheochromocytoma suspected pheochromocytoma 
बच्चे इन फ्यो विल हैव द क्लासिकल थिंग ऑफ पाइप पैल्पिटेशन हेड एक डायफोरिस एंड एपिसोटिक हाइपर टेंशन ना यू गो फॉर यूरिन असेसमेंट एंड प्लाज्मा मेटानेफ्रेंस फर्स्ट इफ इट इज फाउंड टू बिलेटिंग यू विल गो फॉर अ कन्फर्मेटरी टेस्ट विथ ट्वेंटी फोर यूरिन मेटानेफ्रेंस एड्रीनल एडीनोमा विल नॉट हैव दिस बिकॉज मोस्ट ऑफ दम आर नॉन फंक्शनल इन दिस सो पैल्पिटेशन हेड एक विद एपिसोडिक हाइपर टेंशन बिकॉज इन माइग्रेन हाइपर टेंशन के नॉट बी यू कैन सी रिलेटेड सो दिस इज बी बी इज द आंसर What is this image all about? If you see, this is a classical image of lymph edema. Why it is lymph edema? Just see this. So the foot is involved. If it is venous edema, the foot is not involved. So this is what is a classical buffalo's hump. We have a buffalo's hump. What else? We have a tree trunk limb. A tree trunk limb. So this is a lymphatic disorder. This is is what is very 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 important. So hemorrhagic uh, chetan. If the hemorrhagic pancreatitis was the option, then that's right. That's the same thing: severe acute pancreatitis or hemorrhagic pancreatitis. So you can understand that had it been something like this, you could have said that it could be venous edema. But see, the foot is involved. That is lymphatic edema. This is what is very, 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 very important. Patient had a surgery, and post procedure there is a scar. Now, if you see the boundaries of the scar, this is the this is the site of the surgery. The scar. Or the tissue. This is a hypergranulation defect. So this is going above the margin also and beyond the margin. So this is a hypergranulation tissue. Hypergranulation, you can say, uh, disorder, where you have two things. Hypertrophic scar will never go. If you talk about hypertrophic scar, it grows above, but it will not go beyond. This is what is very, very, very important. But if it is a keloid. if it is a keloid it will always 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 go above also and beyond so this is what is a classical what scar keloid scar are you getting me second is most of the time the hypertrophic scar do regress so here they start to regress in 6 to 8 uh, weeks since it has a long history of uh, you can say a procedure seeing the nature of the scar going above and beyond the boundaries this is a keloid are you getting this point this is so option b is far better than c in this case you know what is this this is a vires needle so this is a classical vires needle with an air inlet with a beveled end so that yes the bowel injury once the bowel, once the needle goes inside the abdomen is minimum how we hold it we hold it like a dart what is the advantage it has a very fine lumen so 1 liter per minute is the maximum gas rate that it can push into the abdomen so the chances of rapid pneumoperitoneum induced stretching of vagal and vagal bradycardia this is minimized so this is where the virus is and the chances of uh, concomitant bowel injuries are also very 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 less what is this procedure you know that this is known as a pringles maneuver what is a pringles maneuver it is nothing but occlusion of portal structure so you are going to occlude the cbd you are going to occlude the portal vein and hepatic vein so whenever you have a patient with liver bleed yes either it could be hepatic vein hepatic artery or portal vein do a pringles if the on pringles the bleeding doesn't stop because out of them you have occluded a hepatic artery and portal vein it should have been hepatic vein in that case now hepatic vein you can ligate that side if the bleeding stopped that means either the hepatic artery is there or portal vein this time release a hepatic artery if the bleeding continues that means it is hepatic artery ligated if it is portal vein always 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 you need to repair so you are seeing something which is known as a pringles maneuver so preferred uh, please answer this question preferred fluid intraoperatively options were blood ns colloid okay 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 so me so that is very good that that is very good i was also looking intraoperative requirement of fluid yeah intraoperative fluid requirement so if the colloid is the you can say is given in the option always remember it is a first line fluid why first line fluid because it is going to counter the sudden intraoperative hypotension because in every patient we don't take the blood try to understand we don't keep the blood so intraoperative fluid loss what fluid has to be given so already saline is crystalloid is being given you have to the first line fluid is always and always colloid but yes the best replacement has to be blood so if the option says if the question says the next line fluid i should have been it should have been colloid because blood will require some time to be cross mess to be readied are you getting so according to sir it is blood but i still think it was Uh, ns according to scenario are try to understand already the patient whenever you take try to use your brain dealing try to understand whenever you are doing a surgery the patient is already on saline 
already on crystalline are you getting me or no so once the intraoperative bleeding starts you have to replace it with something because saline is already it's not like a normal scenario where the patient is having bleeding and you bring him to the hospital the first line fluid will be crystalloid are you getting me so intraoperative scenario is different and a patient brought to er is different already the patient is on the fluids so now what to do in that case whenever you are doing a surgery whenever i am doing a surgery if there is intraoperative sudden bleeding already the saline is on it's not because without fluid have you seen anyone performing a surgery without fluid going on yes or no and if it is superficial surgery will never require if you are doing an abdominal surgery any procedure fluid will always be there so try to understand it was so no question was preferred language i no are it's not about sorry but you people uh, i am there to help you visualize that window so in er if the patient is brought with history of rta with bleeding the first line fluid will be crystalloid ns are you getting if the patient is in the ot already the patient is on crystalloid so now you have to replace something to create that voluminous effect and meanwhile you'll say okay boss arrange for the blood blood leke of fatafat so there you have to rely on this crystalloid for that time okay so till then yeah if it is most preferred fluid it will always be always be always be nothing other than blood are you getting so i hope you enjoyed the surgery session do continue watching the ln next channel for the other recalls also so exams are done whatever has been done leave it enjoy your day enjoy your life your life is very important because this life one life and this will never come back till then bye bye